Welcome back to my channel, everybody. So in this video, um, the last one I did was over some of the wiring and the vacuum hoses. If y'all want to check that out. Um, this one today, we're going to be putting on a Holly Sniper. I'm going to unbox that in just a second, but it's a Holly Sniper EFI system. Uh, I'll get that out and show y'all. Now, there's a lot of videos on YouTube about Holly Sniper stuff. This is just my, my honest... I guess you say review on installation, how I ran it specifically for my 1984 K10. If you got one like it, um, if you need some ideas off of how to do some of it, especially like some of the fuel line where the pump goes, I, I'll show y'all that in a second. It's kind of crowded, but um, so this is just my how I how I'm doing it and gonna do it. Uh, if y'all are curious, just for your entertainment or whatever. Give you my thoughts on it, especially after I set it up. Give my thoughts on how hard it is, how aggravating, if I have any problems. Y'all see that on the way. My GoPro, I forgot to clear off my um, card, so I'm on my phone today. Y'all bear with me. I'll show you kind of my step by step. You just won't see it as I'm doing it because I, I don't have a way to hold my phone and do stuff at the same time. So. First thing first, really, I'll unbox this stuff and then I go over all that. Of course, first thing, breather comes off, carburetor comes off. And there's a line right there, my hard line that comes off. But I'll go over all that in a second. Let me get all my get all my stuff out, get it ready, and then we'll start on all that. So a couple things that might help you out is what I use as the uh, shop manuals that I got. There's two volumes to it, and they're super thick. Um, so the front page tells you where they're at on all of it, but it includes both books, so it really helps to get both. And then this is a wiring schematics uh, diagram stuff that I got, which you can see some of that's, yeah. But if you're good at doing reading that kind of stuff, that'll help you out for that too. So this is the box the sniper unit comes in. I have bolts for that, which I think it come with, so I really didn't need them, but oh well. And then I have an adapter plate, a thin adapter plate, because I have a quadrajet spread bore on there. So I bought this, it's a square bore adapter uh, to use on it, because mine, the manifold I got uses square. It's got the bolt pattern for square or spread bore. Uh, so I just needed the adapter to use that anyway. So there's that, what I need. Um, this is the unit. So this is the unit. I got the classic gold because I wanted it to keep that kind of cartridge carburetor look. Uh, apparently the ECU is right here inside of this. Here, this, this is how it sits if you're looking at the front of the truck. Uh, that faces out toward the radiator. And apparently our ECU is housed in here. Of course, you got your throttle linkage, uh, which you'll have to put your little uh, tabs on there, which I'll go over that in a second. Um, generally, take them off your carburetor and, and bolt them on here so you can hook your your TV cable, kick down cable, whatever you want to call it, and then your throttle cable. Um, and let's see. So this is zip tied. Let me get these all unzip tied real quick. So like I said, ECU here, from what I know, this is the return. It's only got one return, but it's got three different locations that you can do your um, supply line to. Um, then you got all your connectors, which it's got instructions. They tell you what they go, what goes where, like your O2 sensor bung and all that, which I'm guessing is probably it. it goes to your O2 line, but anyway. Um, paperwork and, of course, your sticker, gaskets. Um... Somewhere, I read somewhere, I don't know if it's Haggerty or something on YouTube, said that these don't like to operate just dual plane because something about to swirl. I'm not sure, but they use the spacer. But I got an adapter. If it turns out that I ended up needing a spacer to make it run better or whatever, I can just take the adapter off and use a spacer, um, like a one-inch spacer for an adapter pretty much to put it on. But we'll, we'll see about that later. So paperwork harnesses which i know um then you got some so really only like five wires for what i'm doing because i'm not controlling the ignition timing or 
none of that. So a lot of that won't get used. Um, and you got some of the wiring, other wiring here. Let's see. O2, that's your head, my head unit, clamps for the exhaust. I would like to weld it in. I may go get me a different weld in bone or from this clamp on, let's see. I like just cutting right here around and welding it on. I don't know, I don't have my MIG welder, I got a TIG welder. Uh, if I can get it down low enough to weld that on, I'll do that. I don't really want to do the clamp on style, but we'll, we'll see about that later. Um, so there's that in a relay, I guess, for something. <clears throat> Coolant sensor, because obviously if you've looked it up, it doesn't go into learn mode until it gets over 160 degrees, which that's going to go in my intake, which like I said, you'll see all that later. Um, let me get this out. I bought the master kit, so it comes with hose return. I'm going to use the factory, try to use the factory return line that um, goes to the tank. So then all I got to do really is run this line for the supply and put my pump and all that on. Uh, let's see. One of them's filters. That's the pump in there. I'll show y'all see that when I get it out. Different fittings, clamps for the pump. That's a filter and some stuff. Um, uh, the high pressure clamp, fuel injection clamps. Um, which really is a good thing to run all this stuff on anything. I use like the kind you just tighten down the band clamps with a screwdriver. It's not this exact style. This would have been good to run it all over, really, because I'm battling with a few just minor leaks, and I have to go back and retighten because well, this rubber hose, so I have to go back and retighten it. But uh, anyway, there's all that. First off, uh, this all the electric is going to be ran. Of course, this will be set on first, and then I'll run everything else from there, get my looms on it. Then I'm going to tackle the fuel system and run all the lines because that's going to be kind of aggravating because I'm going to have to fab up. You all will see it, but I'm going to have to fab up a bracket. Because um, really, even if I took the supply line and then there this out, I'm going to, I want to keep it to where I can go back to carburetor if I want to because I like, I don't like a lot of electronics. I like fuel injection, obviously like OEM fuel injection. And I like some electronics, you know, touchscreen radios and all that, but I don't like all this new crap they put on there. Sensors for this, sensors for that. You get too close to the lane and it bumps your steering wheel, the, the lane sensors. I cannot stand the modern cars, just electronic stuff like that. And if this ever gives me problems, I want to just be able to quickly swap it back to carburetor. Um, but I'm hoping that I absolutely love this and never want to go back to a carburetor again which is what I'm hoping, but I'm going to leave the old hard line supply line and just put caps on each end and run from the dual, t it's a dual tank, which you can't see because it's probably what I'm at the move, but it's a dual tank and it's got the selector valve in the middle. I'm going to come off of that with a new supply line and my filter to the, hopefully the original, kind of the original location of where the supply comes up. Um, but anyway, we'll get into that, but I'm going to fab up a bracket to mount these for my fuel pump because with the amount of space I got I mean they're gonna have to fab up some kind of bracket I, was, I come up with last night I was thinking about to go on the inside of the rail or if I don't have enough room for these ears or the ears to bolt to it uh like to kind of keep this set up off like all my lines run say if my rail is running this way all my right lines running down the rail which I'll get under there and show you in a minute have a bracket kind of with ears on it the bolts that comes out and then this bolts to that to hold the fuel pump. But if that don't work, I'm gonna have to take a flat piece of metal, which I'll show you, uh, and bolt to the bottom of the rail and then bolt this to that. So come down like, anyway, you can't see, but anyway, it's gonna be on the other side, but kind of come down, mount the pump on the bottom side of the rail kind of, and then go back up in the rail to the supply up here. But we'll, we'll figure that out. It comes with the instructions on this too. This is for the fuel kit and then the extra other instructions for all that. Tells your parts, what all you got. 
Um, so this, we're gonna set this to the side. Cause like I said, everything first is gonna be with the unit. And then I'll get to all the fuel stuff later. Um, and then what came in this box too is from the distributor cap. If you watch my wiring video, I mentioned this, but the distributor cap, but this come out of the firewall or whatever and was plugged into the distributor cap, which I'm guessing if you have the old one, the original one, this would plug into that plug and then go wherever. I don't have to look at the, I have to look at the paperwork, but I don't have that cap anymore. I just had the, the tack and the one distributor wire that comes off of it's AC, ATI distributor. So I'm not gonna need that. I'm gonna have to look up, look at this paperwork though and see. So anyway, let's get the carburetor and all off and uh, we'll get this set on and we'll see what we're working with. Oh, if you're interested in the looms that I use, this is that uh, braided wire loom. It works really good. This is three eighths and then the other side of the head was three quarter. So I use this for all, most of the small stuff. And then I use the three quarter for the big pieces or I had, where I had several of these together wires or where these three eighths tied in. Just if you're curious about that, it's the Dorman. I forgot to mention what I paid for. I paid $1,400 with it because I got the master kit, but it's the it supports up to 650 naturally aspirated horsepower um and it's got the four 120 pound i believe injectors so uh, anyway i paid i got the master kit like i said with the fuel stuff so it was 1400 um i think it was like a thousand around a thousand just for this stuff without the fuel system but, but anyway i needed all that so i just bought the master kit that's what the old quadra jet looks like I'm gonna, I'm gonna reuse that which it came with another one. i'm gonna reuse this one so uh yeah really like i said vacuum lines um uh, electric choke my linkage throttle linkage and all this stuff that's pretty much it because i only got like two yeah i only got two vacuum lines connecting to the carburetor and then the electric choke and that's it just got to pull these throttle linkages off like this is what i was talking about these little tabs you had to put on the, the new brackets but these are not made to take off. I may have to come up with some that bolt on there. Or I got an old quadra jet. I can use one of them off of. We'll, we'll have to figure that out. Don't forget to get you an old rag to throw up under here because it's probably going to have some fuel leak out. So they have the inline filter that comes with this, which I'm going to use. But they also have kind of like what the Fitech uses, but you can get one and use with this too. It's a fuel sump and you use your mechanical pump. You just have to cut the line, run a line to the inlet, and then obviously your return to the return or whatever, but then you have a line that goes to the injector unit because there's a high pressure pump would be in the fuel sump. But I thought it would just be better for me to run the inline pump. Um, I kind of like the idea of the sump, but I'd rather just unbolt that old pump, put the sump, the inline fuel uh, pump on there because I didn't really, I'd have to find somewhere to mount it, which there's plenty of room here. Uh, once I get my hood on and my hinges up out of the way, there's plenty of room right here. I could bolt it to there in the fender wheel, or whatever, but um, then my lines, you know I mean? Yeah, I could run them down through there, come up to it and run it back. I want to keep everything as clean and neat as possible. Uh, and I really didn't want to add anything else to the engine bay. So I'm just going to go with the inline pump. So here's the adapter plate. It came with two gaskets, but I'm gonna use gasket on top for the sniper unit. Uh, I don't know why it's got this little tab that comes off. It can either go this way or 180 degrees and then the tab's over here, which doesn't make sense. I don't know why it wouldn't just be cut exactly the same on this side as that side. I don't know. Like I said, it's just got too much here. And anyway, we're gonna leave it like that because this will be kind of out here i don't know that doesn't make sense so what i got going now i just put the uh it's a it's a 3 8 mpt hole over there in my head but it's aggravating to get there but this was a half inch so i just put an adapter and put that in there which it gets i mean water to it so it's fine should be good oh uh, that's for that temperature sensor so now we're gonna hook these vacuum hoses back up i got this t there's only one big port in the back so i got this t to put pcv and the booster in uh i got some clamps i wish i had some of those i forgot what they're called but they go over the end of the hose and then you press it up on here and it keeps the hose from stretching out to make it loose 
I'll probably go, I'm just gonna stick it on there for now and I'll probably go back and order me some <clears throat> and to put on there so it doesn't get loose. Cause you know, after a while, this, the rubber stretches or whatever and it gets loose. I don't wanna have any vacuum leaks. Uh, and I can put the regular band clamps, but I don't really wanna put those like right there. Cause they don't have to be super tight anyway. It just needs to be snug and keep from stretching. So I'm gonna get some of those, but anyway, we're gonna put that on there for now. Um, and then next up, I have to get on there and figure out. I pretty much decided I'm gonna put the O2 sensor, which I'm gonna get that in there before I run the other wires, but I gotta get my O2 sensor. I'm gonna put it in the collector of the header because it says one to 10 inches from where they come together. Well, I can't really put it with a clamp on. Well, I really can't put it on back behind uh, the collector. I could weld it on right behind it and probably be okay, but I can't put the clamps on there. And I don't have big enough clamps. The three inch, takes three inch clamps and no part store, no uh, hardware store, nothing has the clamps to put it on the three inch collector. So what I'm gonna do is just weld it on the collect the collector, the header. I'm just gonna cut it on those lines and trim some off this way. And I just have to go around the square, um, drill a hole and just clamp it down with some vice grips or something, C clamps, just to hold it down while I tack it up and then I'll weld around it. That's gonna be a bugger trying to, trying to get in there and get around it <clears throat> because it's right there. <laughs> About the frame and all that. Oh man, it's gonna be. Uh, I used to weld for a living, and that's trying to get in. I used to pipe weld for a living, trying to get in them tight spots. I'm used to that, but that's that's a tight spot, and it doesn't make it no better that that's thin, and I don't want to burn through it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be worried about it. I just get in there and burn it in there. But it really needs to come off this outside. We'll figure it out. That's what I'm gonna do next when I get these vacuum hoses done. And then we'll have to tackle some of this wiring. And these fittings, I'm probably gonna keep, I'm gonna get back there and look and see about my routing for my, my fuel. Uh, but I'm probably gonna bring it in right here kind of where the stock location, I gotta put the block off plate on there, but I'm probably gonna put the, put it kind of where the stock location was here, which means I gotta move this fitting to here and put that pillow back there. So currently I'm working on doing some of the wiring I uh, started drilling the hole for the O2 sensor bone, but the step bit I got so darn dull, it, it, it won't even go far past halfway where I need it. So anyway, I gotta get another bit tomorrow, get it drilled and get welded. The only thing is, where I got it, I can weld three sides of that square piece that I cut, um, but the back side is gonna be a pain in the book because you can't really see it. I'm probably gonna have to put a mirror up there and weld it with a mirror, which is aggravating. But anyway, I'll get that done. I already got my wire ran and all I gotta do is make the connection and uh, tie up some of the wire because it's too long. Now I'm working on the rest of this. And that brings me to my other point. So far, the biggest aggravation I've had other than that, where that exhaust bung is, the wiring is so freaking awkward. The lengths, like they're either a little too short or too long, like, well, most of them length is fine on this cause you can cut off whatever you need. But like on these connections, long, like the O2 sensor wire is long enough to reach the O2 sensor itself pretty much. So then you got the O2 sensor, which also has a bunch of wire, and then you're gonna have to loop it around, tie it up somewhere. You don't need all that wire, but you know, it's whatever. Then you get to this. This stuff, like I said, long is fine. Cut it off, crimp it to a terminal, put it wherever you, that's great. The problem is, like some of this stuff, the main connector I got right here, it's just run it right there and zip tied to that, which is fine. It's just, this is the kind of cleanest way I could get it because this is go to my battery. I'm gonna route it around like I got my other stuff to my battery. And then this, uh, the relay, and this is the wire to the fuel pump. I'm gonna run it around and then drop where the old fuel pump and go down the, the frame, which, you know, cool. But it's aggravating because the main wire, like, 
it's just to the length where I can't really get it ran around over here where I wanted to run it nice and clean and tied up to here above the firewall. So I run it up here, but it's just, just run straight. I don't like that. I wanted to run it behind everything first instead of just going straight in front of it. Cause you know, you got all your vacuum hoses. It just runs right over that. But whatever, that's the cleanest I got it. Um, and then, which is this I don't even need, see, cause I'm not doing none of the HyperSpark and all that. So basically the other connector I got, I, I don't even need that. The instructions say to run the dark brown wire to the um, the tack. I don't have it. I got some gauges to put in, but I don't have it in yet, so I ain't run that to the tack. And this is what I was talking about, awkward wiring. Why isn't this yellow wire that goes to your tack the same length as all these other wires? Like, I can cut it off when I need it, but I have to have it here, close to here, unless I got another section of wire and make two different connections. But this is my tack wire, and this is gonna go to there, so I put it right here, but if I'd put it anywhere else, I'd have to get another wire and made it longer. So anyway, whatever. This uh, this goes to the ignition, which I was gonna use my wire that was to my electric choke on it. Um, which this one's long, and this one's long. What I'm probably gonna do, pull this wire back up here, you know, fold it over a couple times as much as it'll fit in this loom cut this one off and um, tie it to it and just have this little section, cut some of this, uh, the, the loom off of it because it's way too long. So anyway, I don't know, we'll figure that out. And this I don't even need, I don't know if I said that, but yeah, that's pretty much it on this. I'll have it pretty clean. I think they'll look all right. Um, I got my vac, these, like I said, Soon, these are all going to be cut and pulled out through the firewall. So, they're just kind of hanging out for right now. But, um, got my vacuum hoses ran from the distributor. This hard line is opposed to what I know goes to work the flaps on the AC. I got to figure out all that stuff. That's one reason why I haven't cut any of these off yet. It's because I know like this used to go to the distributor, which was like electronic spark control. And the cylinder, I think, that was here was for some of that because it had a vacuum line and then electrical wires from that which were these. Um, so I'm gonna wait on that before I do that. But anyway, but like I said, the flaps go there for the vacuum, vacuum line for the flaps inside go there. I think that's what that is. I'm pretty sure we'll find out when I get it back running. Anyway, so the wiring's been kind of aggravation. Then I gotta do the fuel system, get that off, put the block off, fuel pump block off. But I think that's okay. Once I get all this ran, um, you know, this kind of be, this will be out of the way. I'll zip tie it all up nice and straight. And I got that there as <laughs> clean as I can get it. Uh, this should have just been a little longer really. So I could just run it around over here or over there around however I wanted it. But now it's just in the middle. Anyway, I know I'm just rambling on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back on that. And once I get all that done, um, the only other thing in this uh, thing is the setup for the touchscreen. So my fuel, the book for my fuel stuff is over there. Um, but I was talking about my tack for my gauges. There's only one wire. I'll show you. Apparently it just says dark brown and this whole harness. It has one dark brown. And I've seen, I think some other videos, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken, they used the one wire and then like cut and just blocked off or, you know, taped off whatever the other wires. Um, I don't want to do that just for one wire. If I have to, I will, but what I'm probably going to end up doing is So what I'll probably end up doing is coming with a T-tap off of where this tack is. My yellow wire goes to that, or this yellow wire. I'll probably just come off it with like a T-tap and run to the gauge if I can do that. I'm sure, you know, I can run two wires on it. Um, and that, that way I won't have to fool with that other harness. Um, so this one, 
this is this is won't be used. It'll just be I have to tuck it somewhere. I don't know. Now this one goes to the display. You don't have to have to hooked up all the time. I'll probably run it for a while till everything's make sure everything's running good. Everything's learned. You know, it's until it's learned itself pretty good. Then I may unhook it eventually. But uh, I have to run it through the firewall somewhere in there. That's for a later day. But it's coming along slowly but surely and very painfully, but it's coming along.